All right, Enrique here with EAM Crypto Channel, the channel that hardly ever does videos because I'm too damn busy because I'm not a professional YouTuber. I'm not and would not ever want to be. But look, guys, um, today's video is kind of like one that I kind of feel like I have to do, didn't really want to. If it were up to me, I would just do my video on the fact that we hit the uh, BTC call just perfectly for those that I talk to all the time, that I see you in uh, Discord, DMs, all that good stuff, uh, voice chats. Uh, we hit it perfectly almost right i think it was we missed it by 143 dollars it bounced uh, i to be completely transparent i i did uh get out of my long yesterday i had it with some pretty decent leverage i got out i think uh, 26 7 6 5. i just feel like this bounce feels kind of iffy pretty pretty weak and i think more downward pressure is coming more downward continuations coming i have some long setup um on BitGet with 25K and 24K. And, and as far as BitGet, guys, thank you so much for all of you guys trading via my link on BitGet. That's huge. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Really appreciate all the support. But guys, please, please, please don't use too much margin. Don't get greedy. Uh, don't use too much leverage, all right? If you use too much leverage, you're going to get wrecked. You're going to get wrecked. I don't care how smart or good you think you are at this. You're going to get wrecked. So keep that leverage low. Be patient. Wait for spots. Don't just trade to trade. I know Big Get probably hates it that I'm saying that because the more trades you, you do, the, the more they make. And frankly, the more trades you do, the more money I'm going to make off my affiliate link. Just be patient. I have my long set at 25K and I have 24K. I think we're going to go there. Do I have some shorts open right now? No, I actually have a short open on Pepe. Um, Pepe, PP, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Pepe. Um, I'm thinking about closing my short, but I don't know. It looks like it wants to dump more out. I, I opened my short right at about 20,000, uh, 20,100. So I'm in pretty good profit. I'm thinking about closing it, but I just don't know. It still looks kind of dumpy. I'm going to reevaluate this after the video. But guys, I, this video is not about that. It's about the fact that um, I just want to talk about just really transparently about, you know, what is to be a YouTuber in D5, which I've kind of like, kind of i don't do that as much anymore i think i've only done i think i've only promoted four or five projects in the last 12 months so i've really kind of like uh dropped off that and maybe that was the wrong approach because maybe you need more guys like me that have the rep reputation that i have to kind of police those streets a little more as far as my reputation i'm aware of my reputation uh, i'm aware of the fact that um they think that i'm kind of too tough on projects when they come in for my ma's uh, someone said that I'm the anti James Pelton because he just is all smiles and happy and throws all these softball questions and I'm pretty much the complete opposite. But look, guys, I just th this is serious. We're trying to make money here. Uh, we're trying to build more money so that we can accumulate more Bitcoin, more Ethereum, put more money in 401k, whatever your goals are, acquire more real estate, whatever. So I take this very seriously. So if I'm going to bring a project to my channel, I'm going to be very very serious about it and try to be. And I'm going to keep working on being more detailed, asking more follow-up questions, all that good stuff. Um, you know, someone said that they really, a couple of you guys told me you really enjoyed my AMA with Wolf Capital because I was kind of tough on them. And look, I mean, if someone's saying, hey, I'm starting a project because I'm an amazing trader, the first thing I think of is, well, if you're such a great trader, why are you starting a project? Why don't you just keep doing your thing on your own? So that's kind of like one of the reasons I was so tough on them. They proved me wrong. They're killing it. Um... And they didn't prove me wrong because actually after the AMA, I did invest in, in that project. But I guess I'm just using that as an example that I am going to try to police as much as possible. And I think it's pretty funny. I was called the anti-James Pelton, but whatever. I mean, he'll promote any project. I won't. Like I said, I've only promoted four or five. There's a lot of YouTubers out there who will promote almost any project. But that, that's like their main income, right? So with me, I can be completely transparent because this is not my main income in any way, shape, or form. Um, so... Having said that, um, how do I do this? So many of you reached out to me on Thursday uh, in regards to this whole Femco or Famco or whatever that coin is called or, or project or whatever. So the first thing I thought of, what is a Famco? I had no idea. So I looked it up and I was like, oh, true seekers, here we go. Um, just to be completely transparent, I'm not a fan of those guys. Um, don't like those guys. I'm embarrassed that I associated myself with with those guys when I first started YouTubing. I just didn't know. It took me a while to figure out who I want to associate myself, who I don't, all that kind of stuff. So I know when things happen with those guys, a lot of people go to me because they're like, hey, you used to do the show with them. Yes, I did. I'm extremely embarrassed about it, but I have no affiliation to these guys whatsoever. 
So when people would ask me, well, what do you think about the truth uh, seeker token or what is it true? I think it's the name of that token, whatever. I would just be like, well, they, they spend a lot of money on marketing. So it's probably gonna do really well at first and it's gonna tank and we'll, we'll look up at the, at the chart in a bit. But I'm guessing that what I said is completely true. And I think last time I checked, my, my, my analysis on that token is pretty good. Um, but what I'm trying to get at is with this whole FAMCO thing and all everything and whether you know things that happen are fraudulent or they're scamming people outright, I, I think that's really tough. I think it's really tough. Um, but I do think, uh, uh, I, th I think some tough love needs to happen in these DeFi streets. So for example, if you held on to, for example, let's, let's, let's talk about this FAMCO thing. And again, I'm like the last guy that should be talking about it because I haven't researched it. Um, I, I looked at it some with the help of some of you guys watching this right now. Um, but I don't know the project that that well. Um, but yeah, I did notice that there were some things that were done that were basically lies. Uh, I did see the clip on the James Pelton interview where they asked uh, one of the True Seekers guys, I think it was, yeah, it was Lou um, or Lewis, whatever his name is. They asked him if, um, how he knew the, the, the founder of Famco and he gave some answer. It turned out that he was lying. And then later on he said, yeah, I was lying. And it turns out that they're related. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. And you call yourself the True Seekers. Like, yeah, the irony is amazing there. So, but at the end of the day, is that like actually illegal? I don't know. I'm not a lawyer, but I do know this guys. You got right now, these markets are tough and they're very, very, very illiquid. So you got to be really smart with your investments. So if you see something like that, where the founder, or I'm not even sure who the founder is, is it him? Is it that other guy? I don't even know. I'm not even going to speculate on that. You guys can figure it out on your own. There's a lot of people have done a lot of research on this. I'm not going to do all that research. I'm just going to say whenever there's smoke, there's usually fire. So I'm just going to stay away from projects like that. So I, anything that's affiliated with those guys, I'm, I just stay away from it. There's, I know that there was a guy from another project that dealt with them that he did a video. He was upset about them. There's all this stuff. So what does that tell you? There, there's something there most likely, but I don't know. But all I'm saying is that for me, um, as far as like, you know, whether this is something that's considered fraud or not, is it a scam? Is it not a scam? That's where it gets really tricky. You, you got to really do the research. You got to go and look at wallets. You got to do all this stuff that I'm not going to do. All I'm saying is I'm not going to get involved with projects like that. That's it. And as an investor, you should, you should be really, really smart. So here, let's take a look at something here. Let, first of all, the, the true seekers token, what is it called? It's called true, true. Can you spell? Uh, is it called true? True seeker token. Let's see. Is it called truth? What is this damn shit coin called? There it is. True seekers. Okay. <clears throat> Let's look at the chart. Okay. So pretty much what we thought, right? Went up big time. Yeah, did really well at the start. Predictable. They did good marketing. They do really good marketing, these guys. And then it did that. Yeah, I mean, pretty much what I said what was going to happen. Now, by me, when people ask for my opinion, <laughs> eight buys, eight, eight transactions total. What a joke. Um, when people ask for my opinion about this uh, a couple months ago, right, when it was up here and I was telling everyone I think it's going to, you know, probably go down to close to zero, but it's going to depreciate a lot. Is that me fudding it? No, it's not me fudding it. I'm just giving my analysis when people ask me that I think that this is probably going to be a bad investment. Did I say, you know, does that, does this mean that it's a scam? It's a money grab scam? Maybe, but you have to do the research and look at the wallets. Look at, look to see who, who got the money. Where did all the money go? And I'll tell you the answer. I'm not going to do that research. Um, I didn't invest in this project. I have no care to invest in this project. So I'm, I don't, I'm not going to do the research as to whether or not this was a money grab scam or not. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. I have no idea. All I'm saying is that this is clearly, you know, if you still, this is where the tough love comes in. If you're still holding this token today and you were up here, you got to get better. You got to get better at this DeFi game because these DeFi streets are tough and they're going to eat you up alive. They're going to eat you up alive if you cannot just do just common sense. I mean, you, you saw this token, it did really, really well. All this marketing happened. And then you just saw all this right here. I mean, it's just pretty obvious. It's just going to keep going down. And now it's at, you know, almost no liquidity. I mean, no, I mean, 1.5 K in volume. I mean, 
ouchies. Um, you know, like this sell right here for 1553. I mean, if you want to see if this is a money grab scam or not, look at that and see what wallet it went to and whose wallet that is. And then check to see if that there's any correlation with any of the other big sells. And if it's the same wallet, um, then, then maybe you can come up with some stuff. But all I'm saying is that this was just, <sighs> maybe it's a money grab scam. Maybe it's not, I don't know. But all I'm saying is you as an investor, if you're still in this project and you were up here, you're doing it wrong. You need to be better and you're going to lose a lot of money in DeFi if you're, if you, if you're doing it like this. Uh, and I'm just being completely honest. And, um, as a YouTuber, it's tough because you don't want to get accused of funding projects and hurting people's bags. But at the same time, like if you look at the stock market, for example, there's all these services, all these, and some of them are huge, right? That get, basically put a rating on a stock. It's either a buy rating, a sell, hold, whatever. So are they fudding? Are they, are they uh, basically um, slandering that stock and the owners of that stock? No, they're just giving their analysis of that asset. So in my opinion, for me to state, hey, this is probably going to be a bad investment up here. Was I fudding? Was I slandering? No, of course not. I'm just giving analysis. And guess what? I was 100% right. So um, now if I was to do a video calling them scammers for sure, maybe they are, maybe they're not. I don't know. I haven't done the research. Do I have my opinions about that? Sure. But I don't know for sure. So I can't say that they're for sure scammers and that this was a, you know, an intentional slow rug. I can't say that for sure. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. I'm not going to do the research. But if you still hold this token, you should have already done the research. You really should have because that's the only way you're going to make money in these streets. So as far as the Famco or Famco, um, let's see. You guys hit me up about this so much. Um, uh, I'm the last guy to talk about it. I just, like I said, before Thursday morning, I hadn't even heard of it. Am I even going to be able to find this? Do they even have a Twitter? Famco. Um, I don't even know they have the Twitter, guys. So I don't know. I just don't know enough. Of, I, I, I saw a video. I saw this video. It was a very interesting video. Very good. Um, there we go. I guess this is their website. So I don't know if this is a scam or a good project or bad project. Um, I, I saw a video where they state that this warehouse, they said in a video that they bought it, but maybe they didn't. I don't know. There's just a lot that a lot, a lot to uh, uncover there. Um, but the, what I wanted to cover was that I heard, okay, so look guys, as in investors, when you see something like this, right? No last name, a little blimp about what he does. I mean, guys, I own a business. I have employees. I have not affiliated with crypto in any way. I'm also in software sales, married with kids. That's one of the, look, I would do a YouTube video every single day if I could. That's how much I enjoy it. I think it's so much fun. I just don't have the time. I have so much on my plate. I have all these stresses. I, you know, sometimes I'm up late at night just working. Um, it's also important to me to be with family. Um, so I, I don't, as a as as someone who actually is in it and doing a lot of stuff and I'm probably doing too much stuff and I think I have maybe like a couple more years left of me hopefully by then I can just retire. Um, I don't this this does feel weird right? But I don't know like this guy he's a successful entrepreneur he has all these restaurants, uh, he has some retail clothing, and now he's going to be able to do this whole mining thing. I mean, I've, I've actually visited, visited, visited Bitcoin mining places. Whew. Setting those up looks like a lot of work. Many, many months of work, many, many dollars. Looks like a lot. Looks like a lot. How's he going to find the time to do that? And why doesn't he have anything listed as far as his last name? Now we know that he's related to the True Seekers guy. Um, I don't know. Why wouldn't he list the, what, where are the restaurants? Where are the websites to the restaurants? What have they done? What, I don't know, man. This just feels weird. So can I prove that anything of this is right or wrong or not? I have no idea. What I'm saying though, is if, 
if you invested in this or were thinking about investing in it and didn't just just this part right here if this part right here didn't just set alarms off of like hey we need more data more information this guy too nathan uh okay what's your last name where did you work where's your linkedin profile yeah i don't know um god this website's terrible who did this i can i can do a website like this i've done websites like this this is bad um i don't know so but does that mean that this is a scam for sure no can, may, is it a scam maybe i don't know um but all i'm stating is that i think it's important to just do as much research as possible and these youtubers that interviewed this guy patricio they should have dug so much more my dog's trying to get in they should have dug so much more asked them so many more questions they should have asked things like hey why are the two seekers guys in every single interview you do <laughs> who's really like who's really heading this like there's just so many different questions sorry about my dog um so yeah so i mean as far as like you know i felt pushed that many of you have stated hey you really need to do something as far as a video about this i mean we can use this as an example this is just just across the whole DeFi landscape there's still so much that needs to be done so much policing that needs to be done did I take the right approach by just doing a lot less videos only if I really like the project or something about the project that I really want to uh, uh, find out more about and then bring them onto my platform? It was that the right approach or should I just start bringing in more, more projects and, and just hounding them hard? I don't know. Like, I don't know what the right answer is. Um, I am going to try to add a couple more projects um, into the mix and try to bring more in. Um, and guys, in, complete transparency if a project comes on to my show they pay me i literally make money for interviewing them which is really cool but when i first started in youtube that felt really cool i was like wow this project is going to pay me money to come on my channel this is amazing stroked my ego now after being in this space for a while it's like i feel totally different about it i'm like i need to get rid of this thing it's kind of like in the way um now it's like um or just get a microphone that works that's why i'm always on this headset now it's like i feel like this pressure to find out as much as i can about them to protect the investor so and to protect myself because a lot of these i if i brought them on the platform i probably invested in it so i don't know I, i've probably bought you know ever since i started in DeFi, which was january of last year how many tokens have i purchased or projects have i been a part of in some way where i invested or bought an nft or staked or something probably like 50 probably like 50 projects and here we are all these months later. And I think right now in my wallet that I own more than like, I don't know, a hundred dollars of, I probably have like five to seven. So it's like one of those things where um, none of, it's such a small percentage of these last where you have to have an end in mind. You gotta have some kind of, let me get this sh pathetic, stupid project out of my screen. There we go. Uh, and who knows, maybe it's a great project. So, hey, don't 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 come after me legally. I I, I didn't say, I didn't say that you, you're, you're bad. I said, maybe you're bad, maybe you're good. Uh, but anyways, um, <clears throat> I, I lost my train of thought. Um, but yeah, but, but, but anyway, so when I, I think what I'm going to start doing, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I'm all over the place now. I lost my train of thought is that, and, and that's, that's the other thing as a YouTuber, you have to worry now about getting sued by these projects or by other YouTubers. If you say something they don't like, so it really, it, you know, the other day I heard a YouTuber say, well, do your own research, but don't FUD a project. Well, how are you going to do your own research as a viewer if no one can say anything negative about a project because <laughs> they're going to get sued? So it's just like, really? It's just so silly. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to start bringing in more projects, which is great for me, more income for my channel. I can stack more Bitcoin and Ethereum and, um, and just hand them hard. And I know I already have a reputation of being tough. And I know a lot of projects do not want to come to my channel because of that. I've had not one, not two, but three, three channels, three projects. I'm not going to name them. <clears throat> they came to my channel. We did the AMA. It was recorded. I do everything recorded. And they felt that I was too hard on them. And they told me, do not publish it. And I didn't. Um, it was really tricky. With one of them, I really was going to do it. And they... They got pretty rough about it. They, they said they were going to like try to get me off YouTube or whatever. So I was like, fine, I won't publish it. Uh, but they paid me. So I got paid 
to interview a project, I was really hard on them. They said, hey, sorry, you're too tough on us and don't. So um, long story short, I guess I'm just, I can just keep doing that. And that way I'm protecting you guys. But the, if that's the case, I'm going to have to have something in writing from them that if they come to my channel, they feel the AMA is too, too hard or ask too many tough questions and we don't publish that I can still tell, I can still legally be okay to tell you guys that I interviewed them. Cause then what's the point? The only thing that's going to happen is that I get paid to interview someone, but you guys don't know anything about the fact that this project was probably not a good investment because they couldn't answer some tough questions. So maybe that should be the, the path forward. You know, I, I don't know. Or should I just stick to TA? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so I'm going to kind of play around with a few things, but, you know, I just feel like this space is just still in such bad need of just like more policing. Um, and maybe me taking my approach of just totally focusing on <clears throat> trading and TA uh, was maybe not the best because there's you need more guys like me. I don't care, guys. I don't care if I piss off other YouTubers. I don't care if I piss off other project founders anymore. I used to care. When I first started, I, I did care. Um, but now that I've been in this space for almost a year and a half, I don't care. If anything that I say upsets a founder or a YouTuber, that's fine. I don't care. Um, but I'm just going to be honest and I think we need more honesty and I'm in a position, I'm in a unique position where I can be completely honest because YouTube is not my main form of income. If I don't make any money from YouTube, that will be fine. If I do, that'd be great. Trust me. That'd be great. Life's expensive. Kids, colleges need to get paid for. Let's go. But, um, having said that, I feel like I rambled on for too long. Um, I hope that this is you know, a few guys called me out and said, Hey, you've been too quiet about some of these. Um, what's the word I'm, I'm going to look for? Maybe possibly suspect projects and that maybe I was too quiet publicly about it. Uh, but at the same time, it's like, it's very tricky. And, um, uh, I certainly don't want to have to worry about, you know, getting sued by some project or some YouTuber. Cause there's, I'm telling you some of these YouTubers, they are trigger happy when it comes to that. Um, so anyways, um, I don't know. Um, I'm being totally Mr. Rambles over here and I'm rambling on all over and over. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that I left out, but I hope this helps for those of you that think that I should have said more publicly about some of these projects in the past. Um, hey, um, you know, I just thought it made more, more sense for me to focus on trading TA and less on DeFi projects, but, um, but maybe, yeah. So maybe I do need to pivot a little bit and, and, and bring some of these on and just be tough. And, um, and, but at the same time, I think I need to be respectful if they come onto my channel, not because they paid me guys, but because if they know that my channel is not going to be, you know, the softball question, everything's cheering, happy, uh, channel and they're, they're willing to come on. And I tell them before they come on that that's the case. I need to kind of respect the fact that they're doing that. So, um, so maybe that should be the, the path forward. I don't know. You guys let me know. You guys love to DM me on Discord and Twitter, uh, but you guys hardly ever comment. So feel free to comment too. It, it helps the algo, so whatever, that's fine. Like um, if we get to 5K subscribers before this year, great. If we don't, don't. Uh, but definitely keep using my big gut link because that actually does mean a lot. But all right, guys, I hope that's it. I think that's it. And uh, yeah, have a great weekend. See ya.